Welcome to whoever may be watching this short vid. My name is Graham Hansen and I'm a lifelong designer, starting with architecture, currently teaching visual communication design at a university in Western Turkey. Also practicing as something of an industrial designer with a passion for urban mobility for anyone that understands the design implications. A thanks to the organizers for taking the initiative to develop this forum, addressing the challenges facing art and design education, while we still have the chance to save art and design education. It is regretted that my attendance is not personal, but I'm overwhelmed with bureaucratic processes associated with current patent submissions. And there we have it. One of the primary issues facing designers having to continuously explain something to techno-bureaucrats who may be great in filling out forms, but have no real comprehension of design. One of the challenges facing designers is that everyone is born with an innate sense of design. Therefore, they claim to be a designer when it suits their needs for clothing or decorating a house. And by that logic, then they think they have the right to impose their design sense on the remainder of the public. As designers, we have failed to protect or promote what it means to be a designer. We have not valued the title designer sufficiently. Engineers in particular are prone to making claims about design, despite never having taken one basic lesson in basic design 101. Every engineer or techno bureaucrat claims an understanding of design simply because there is a mathematical formula or algorithm into which an idea or object can be compartmentalized. Engineers cannot and do not offer successful formula about how to develop innovation or how to relate to the human condition, but they do make claims about a capacity to design. So what is design without humans? What is design if it is reduced to mathematical formulae? Partly because the world is convinced that engineering and science is somehow superior to social sciences and art or design, the myth is perpetuated by every graduating engineer, but also promoted by the professional bodies of engineers. Whereas science and engineering has improved some quality of life through the industrial age, that same engineering in science is largely responsible for the global problems of the current pollution crisis. Designers have acquiesced to mega pollution of this planet, partly because, like most humans, designers feel the need for gainful employment in order to eat, to live, and have swallowed the engineer's notion that numbers are superior to humans or nature. Also, because designers have not organized themselves into professional entities in the manner of engineers or architects, perhaps bullied into the notion of being inferior to techno-bureaucrats because of a lack of precise mathematical formulae around the imprecise and subjective art of being a designer. As the free-spirited designer that I am, normally I'm quite allergic to bureaucracy, except there is growing evidence suggesting that designers need to form an extensive professional body, setting standards and awarding accreditation along some as yet undefined criteria. Designers must have a knowledge of nature because we are all hot wired to love nature somehow. And because designers are producing designs for objects and processes that will be used by and enjoyed by humans for humans. There should be a professional body defining such standards. This vid doesn't allow the time to extol further on how such a professional body could be organized. Neither is there time to expand on the education aspects of this. Suffice to say that such education must meet the requirements of graduation, but also should be geared towards the eventuality of accreditation by an appropriate design body.